Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you guys are having a, a good Wednesday evening and survived the, the warm weather we've been having lately. We'll get started in just a second and I'll introduce myself and let you know what the workshop's all gonna be about. Um, and then if you guys haven't, um, make sure to sign up uh, and register for this uh, workshop. I'm dropping the link in the um, comments section. Um, this is also a liability waiver. Main thing is I don't want you guys self-diagnosing yourselves um, and, uh, and whatnot. Um, make sure you seek out a medical professional, whether it's a physical therapist, chiropractor, uh, physician, um, or somebody else who can give you the proper diagnosis. Hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Are you able to hear me okay? If you guys could let me know if you can hear me, that would be awesome. Make sure everything, the audio is good. And then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, get started in about a minute or two. I just wanna make sure everybody can hop on that wanted to, to attend. Um, and this will be uploaded too. Um, you guys don't have to be like taking notes or anything. This can be uploaded. Um, it's gonna be uploaded to the to the group or I can also share it um, as well um, to those that want, want to watch it on replay um, as well, okay? Um, all right, good. Thanks, Jeremy, for letting me know. Glad, glad everything's sounding well. Good. All right, let me pull up my slides here and we'll, we'll get started. And if you guys have any uh, questions, like right off the bat, uh, go and put those in the comments as well. Um, that's one thing as I want. I want you guys, I don't want you guys leaving with questions, all right? Um, no questions are off the table. I'm here to help um, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them, okay? Right. Let me get to find these slides here. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Um, so if you guys are here to uh, learn a bit more about uh, low back pain and uh, you know how to work out pain free uh, and get back to doing the workouts how you want to without having to modify or make modif uh, modifications to squats and deadlifts or you're having pain with those um, you're in the right spot we're gonna be talking about that this, this topic and uh, get you back to working out and squatting and deadlifting pain free all right um, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Dr. Ben, and um, I'm a physical therapist with Prokinetics Physical Therapy and Performance in Uptown Oakland. I will be your guys' neighbor uh, once everything kind of starts getting back to uh, some sort of normalcy and gyms can start opening up and whatnot. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys in person um, as well. Typically, we do these workshops in person, but uh, with the nature of everything going on, um, virtual is the best that we got. Um, but we will be most likely doing some workshops on squat mobility, overhead mobility, how to decrease knee pain, shoulder pain, and stuff like that. But I thought we'd give you guys a little bit of a taster uh, um, virtually and, uh, and whatnot, too. So I'm super passionate about this topic because I once, too, used to have low back pain. And I know how frustrating it can be. I've had doctors tell me I should just stop, stop squatting, stop deadlifting, and exercising in general. Like, how crazy is that, you know? Um, I also had PTs, physical therapists trying to rehab me. This was before I got into physical therapy school um, that I could tell this, these PTs didn't really understand like the biomechanics of a squat, didn't really know how to do a dead. They, I could tell they probably haven't done a deadlift um, in their entire life. Uh, not a knock on them. It's just they didn't have, that wasn't their specialty. Um, and a lot of times PTs aren't trained in um, how, to, how to perform squats correctly, how to perform deadlifts correctly. Because um, when done properly, um, and without mobility restrictions, everybody should be able to do it. And one of the best exercises to bulletproof the low back is actually deadlifts. Um, deadlifts get a bad rep. Um, and a lot of times people think uh, deadlifts are what cause back pain. No, incorrect deadlifts cause back pain. If you do a deadlift correctly, it's going to help strengthen up uh, that low back. Okay. Um, it's one of the best things you can do. Anyways, these P the PTs I saw, they went and blamed it on a weak core. Um, although I was squatting and stabilizing over 300 pounds, they blamed on a weak core. If somebody is stabilizing and has 300 pounds on their, their back and able to stabilize that through like a squat or a deadlift, most likely their core is doing okay. Um, but at the time, I didn't know any better. But, but once I became a PT, this is a topic I studied extensively because the story is all too common. And uh, these are the types of people we really specialize in working with 
They've helped hundreds of people get back to exercising um, and living their life free from low back pain. Not only that, but getting, but getting them back to squatting and deadlifting more weight than they ever did before because we work on their biomechanics and improve their uh, movements and make it more efficient. We don't want to just get you back to where you were. We want to get you even further um, than that, okay? So um, for those that are watching, I want you to let me know um, what type of or how long you've been dealing with low back pain. If you are having low back pain, uh, what is restricting you from doing um, and, and whatnot too. That can be like sleeping, can be exercising, can be sitting for long periods of time. Um, if you feel free to share that in the comments, uh, I'm going to try and tailor this to the people that are watching um, and make it uh, most appropriate and tailored to you. Okay, so you can get most benefit. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you if this if you are having low back pain and you've gone to see a specialist like a physical therapist or a chiropractor or a physician, and you're still having low back pain even after working with them, it's not your fault for having low back pain. Um, it's it's the medical professionals that have told you that, oh, just stop working out or stop deadlifting or stop squatting. It's their fault for not being able to get you to where, where you need to be or finding somebody that can that can help you, all right? So, but luckily there's a solution to all this and it's a solution we've helped hundreds of people find. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today, all right? Um, so a little bit about us is uh, we're not only just physical therapists, but we're also certified strength and conditioning specialists and USA weightlifting coaches. So our specialties bridging the gap between rehab and performance. Um, no offense uh, or knock on grandmas, but I like to think it's not your grandma's uh, physical therapy. Um, you know, we work with uh, people that are really active and want to get back to higher levels of, um, you know, running, squatting, working out, losing weight, uh, stuff like that. Okay. So um, lower back hurts on uh, left side after I stop moving. So sitting after a few minutes, I start to feel it. All right. Yeah. So um, we're going to be talking about why that's happening. Um, this is a super common complaint that we hear all the time is um, pain for with sustained sitting. Um, and we're we'll going to be talking about what you can do about that, okay? And then squat depth seems to bug my back uh, from time to time. Um, I assume this is from butt wink. What's the first thing I should address? That's a great question, Jeremy. And this is like one of the main reasons, and it was the main reason I was having back pain back then, all right? But nobody looked at my squat, all right? It was the way I was squatting back then that was a problem. It wasn't a weak core, all right? So that's a great question. We're going to address the, the butt wink and kind of describe um, what, that, what that is. Um, okay, so you guys can have a better understanding of that and how to address it. But I'll kind of give you an insight before we get into it. It's not the back's fault. It's usually restrictions in the ankles or the hips, and the low back has to compensate for those um, impaired mobility at those sites, okay, of the ankle and the and the hip, which leads to poor positioning of that low back, especially if you go deeper into a squat. But great question, Jeremy. And this is something I um, we're we're definitely going to address because it's super super important, especially for people. Um, that um, do boot camps, um, do CrossFit, um, do squats regularly, all right? Because it's something I see all the time, and it's usually what's um, the issue for people that are having low back pain with squats. So great question. Um, and we'll be getting into all that. So subjectives for tonight is I want to identify the most common causes of back pain so you guys get an idea of what could be possibly going on with your low back. Again, I don't want you guys diagnosing yourselves, all right? But I want you to have a better understanding of the different types of diagnoses and how they present and why they're why they occur. Okay, and then we're also going to be going over effective treatment for back pain uh, and then strategies for re prevention. But most importantly, I want to answer any questions that you guys may have as well. Okay, again, no questions are off the table. Um, I'm here to help and I want to answer all the questions. Okay, um, so just some background information about the low back. So it's the single leading cause of disability worldwide. Years lived with disability caused by low back pain has increased by 54% in just the last 15 years. And this is due to people becoming more sedentary, people sitting for longer durations. 80% um, of the population will experience back pain at some time in their lives. All right, so this goes to show that you're not alone. A lot of people think that when they have, when they're experiencing back pain, like this is something that's really rare um, and that they feel kind of singled out. It's not the case. It's very, very common. Okay, uh, it's responsible for fifty billion dollars in healthcare costs each year. Okay, um, so it's very, very prevalent, and it's the number one 
um, type of injury that we see in our practice is low back pain, probably followed by knee pain and then shoulder pain, okay? So let's get into the anatomy. I'm not gonna go super deep into this, but I want you guys, I think it's important for patients to have a better, a decent general understanding of anatomy and what's going on with their body. Because whenever we teach somebody an exercise, we explain why it's helping them. We found that, and research backs this up, is if a patient understands the exercise and why they're doing it, they're much more likely to adhere to it and continue to do it. Adherence is gonna improve the patient's outcome, okay? And improve your guys' income because you're gonna be more compliant with it because you understand why you're doing it. Not just, not just gonna give you an exercise, be like, okay, go do this, it's gonna make it feel better, all right? I want you to understand the why, because if for some reason down the road, it kind of irritates, so uh, your back becomes irritated or you did a little bit too heavy squats or deadlifts, you know what exercise to do. Like, okay, this is what's going on. This is some exercises that um, should help. And then if they don't, then you need to seek out a medical professional, but um, you should have the necessary knowledge to be able to kind of help yourself and not be dependent on a physical therapist, not be dependent on chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, your physician or anything like that, okay? So we're gonna go briefly over anatomy. So we're gonna go over the spine specifically to start, okay? So we have our low back. If you look at my low back right now, you guys can see that there's a kind of a gentle curvature here, okay, in my low back. Everybody should have that, okay? When our, our spinal alignment is there and positioned like that, we have vertebrae that are stacked on top of each other, okay? So we got their curvature here, the low back, and then the vertebrae are stacked on top of each other. In between each vertebrae, there's a disc. It's full of fluid. Right? And so when the bone is moving or that vertebrae is moving on top of that other vertebrae, um, that's solid bone. Okay? That disc is what's going to have to kind of move or maneuver around it and be influenced by the vertebrae because it's fluid. Okay? Um, so I'm sure you guys have heard some of disc herniations um, and, and whatnot and how scary those can be. Um, so disc herniations um, happen because of poor movement during a squat or sitting for long periods of time. When we have the spine stacked on top of each other in that natural positioning, okay, that weight that's around that disc, that disc that's full of fluid, it's evenly dispersed all the way around. Okay? However, if we start losing that curvature and we start bending or rounding out or sitting with bad posture, okay, like this, Okay, you guys can see my low back's a little bit more rounded out. Okay, I lost that curvature. Now I'm rounded out. Now that front part of that, that vertebrae is pushing down on that front part of the disc, and that disc has got to move somewhere. A lot of times it's going to move backwards, right? And so we have nerves that pass out the back of the spine, and sometimes if that disc herniation can get bad enough, it can, it can um, push out and push onto those nerves and cause pain down the back of the leg or just localized pain in the low back site, okay? So that's kind of going on, what goes on with disc herniations. Um, and so if you are sitting for long periods of time or you notice that it gets aggravated with sitting, I would take a look at what your posture is, okay? And what that looks like, right? And what's going on there. Um, because if you know, like, like if we sit in a couch, we kind of just get kind of sucked into it. And no matter what, we're gonna have that rounding. Okay. If you sit, if you sit with normal posture and have that normal alignment in the spine, okay, everything should be sitting nice and that you should have that nice curvature. Everything should be in the right alignment and that should free up the pain. Okay. A lot of times, um, a lot of times, just a second here, I just got a notification that this video, um, oh, we're good. Okay. Sorry. I just had a notification that about the video, but it was a video I've done, I did it in the past. Um, anyways, so when we have, like I was saying, if we manipulate our low back, all right, and have it in this normal curvature, everything's in alignment, we shouldn't have pain, okay? However, if you notice when you slouch like this and you start having pain, that's probably most likely due to the disc becoming irritated, okay? So that's what I would look at first. I get a lot of questions about um, sitting posture and everybody's like, you know, um, I correct my posture and five to 10 minutes later, I'm back in that poor rounded out position, okay? So one thing you can do is you can actually take a rolled up towel, 
I don't have a rolled up towel with me here today, but I do have a foam roller and it's gonna ser serve that same purpose for demonstration purposes anyways, all right? So, because this foam roller is gonna act like a towel, it's a, this, this foam roller is a little bit too big, okay? But what we're gonna do is if I put this foam roller behind my low back, okay? My low back, I literally can't push back into it. It keeps me upright, okay? And it maintains that curvature. Like I'm not literally, I'm literally not contracting my core. I'm not even thinking about my posture and I can't, I have to maintain good posture because that foam roller is there. That's what a, um, a towel can do as well. Um, you just wanna make sure you scoot your hips all the way back into that chair, slide that foam roll, or sorry, slide that um, towel or roll up towel um, just in that small, small of the back where that curvature should be. Um, and that will help maintain that alignment, okay? Um, however, everybody wants to get, I don't want to get saying like, oh, you have to maintain the perfect posture. There is no perfect posture. Um, there's a more ideal one, but that's even the most ideal posture is not one we want to be sustaining for eight hours a day. Okay. The best posture is in that your next posture. And okay? what I mean by that is keep moving. All right. Ideally you should be sitting for an hour, standing for an hour, walking for 10 minutes and doing that on loop throughout the day. Okay. Keep, it keeps that spine moving keeps it healthy, okay? So that's super important. Um, and then on top of that, um, with regards to anatomy, we also have our um, muscles, okay? The muscles that support the, or the core muscles, okay? A lot of times people think that the core muscle is the six pack muscle. That's not, it actually has no direct attachment to the low back. So you can, you, somebody can have a ripped six pack, but actually have significant low back pain, okay? They might have a strong, rectus abdominis that's the six pack six pack muscle but they don't actually have the strong core that's going to help support that low back okay so the you're like okay well what muscle is is the muscle that supports the low back and the core that we should be training it's a muscle called the transverse abdominis all right it's like our built-in back brace and it kind of acts as a corset okay it wraps all the way around from the front all the way to the back and helps stabilize that spine okay um, and so that's one of the most important muscles in that low back. Then we also have a muscle called the quadratus lumborum, okay? Um, and that is a muscle that attaches at the bottom of the rib cage here, and then it spans down and attaches at the pelvis, all right? This muscle can be, um, can spasm up a lot and can be a source of a lot of low back discomfort or pain. Um, because this quadratus lumborum isn't a muscle that's supposed to be doing a whole lot of work. However, it will do all, it will start acting as a stabilizer um, for the spine and be, but that's not its job, right? And when the body asks a muscle to do a job that's not intended to, it becomes overworked. When that muscle becomes overworked, it becomes tight and irritated. When it becomes tight and irritated, that's when people get muscle spasms and have pain, all right? So I see a lot of people that they say that they have to stretch every day. They have to be, um, they have to do soft tissue work. They have to do foam rolling um, every single day just to keep pain calmed down. And that's because they're not treating the root issue. Okay, they're treating symptoms. The root cause is the core weakness. If they treat that core weakness, that core weakness and made it strong like it's supposed to, then the, that quadratus lumborum wouldn't be getting so tight. All right, and they wouldn't have to be stretching out so often. Okay, because it's not being asked to do a whole lot of work because we have the stability coming from the transverse abdominis, the built-in back brace, okay? And we're gonna be going, you guys are like, probably like wondering like, okay, how do I strengthen the transverse abdominis? And that's what we're gonna be going over tonight. I'm gonna be giving you guys an exercise to address that and help with that as well, okay? Um, and so yeah, that's kind of the anatomy. The anatomy. Obviously it's, it can be uh, it's a lot more in depth and complicated than that, but for tonight's purposes and you guys to understand what's going on with with your body and um, the anatomy and stuff. This is this is all you, that's all you need. Okay. So types of injuries, herniated discs. All right. We kind of talked about that already. Um, it can be that disc can be pushed back and it can hit a nerve and cause some irritation. Um, then we also have uh, muscle spasms, which we already kind of talked about the cause of that. Okay. That's when um, the muscles that are supposed to be providing that stability aren't doing it, and so these other muscles start being overworked and start spasming up because of it and causing some irritation, all right? One other common type of low back pain is sciatica, okay? 
sciatica can happen for a couple different reasons. It can be coming from the low back or it can be coming from down the chain kind of in the glute area. So sciatica stands for the sciatic nerve. All right, the sciatic nerve travels and exits the back of the spine, okay, and travels down the back side of the glute all the way down the leg into the foot. Okay. And so if we have a disc herniation and it's pressing back on that sciatic nerve, that could be cause a, a reason for sciatica. It could also be coming from the piriformis. Okay, the piriformis is a very, very small muscle located deep within the glutes. Right? Again, it's a very small muscle. It's not supposed to be doing a whole lot of stability um, or work. However, it will if the big glute muscles aren't doing their job, just like the core. If that core is not doing its job, these other muscles that aren't supposed to be providing stability start being overworked, become irritated. Same thing with that piriformis. It becomes overworked and irritated and can cause pain and tightness. That sciatic nerve travels underneath that piriformis. So when that sciatic or that piriformis gets tight, it can compress on that sciatic nerve and cause pain down the back of the leg. Okay, so we got to kind of screen two different joints. Um, we got to figure out, is it coming from the low back or is it coming from the piriformis or down the chain? Um, that's super important. Don't, get, don't guess, you need to assess. All right, see a lot of people um, that have low back pain, they'll go into YouTube and search, what's the best exercises for low back pain, okay? Um, and it kind of gives them a cookie cutter um, thing. You need to figure out what's the underlying issue, right? And um, so I'm gonna give you guys a well-rounded um, set of exercises that are gonna help address these main three diagnoses that we talked about, piriformis syndrome or sciatica, low back spasms, okay? And then three, um, core weakness, okay? Those are the top three things that we see and tend to be responsible for low back pain. So we're gonna be giving you three exercises for that um, tonight and make sure that you guys feel comfortable with those, okay? All right. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. If you guys have any questions, I know it's a lot of information to take in, but hopefully that makes sense, all right? The good news is about all this. You guys are probably also wondering like, okay, I, have, I may have one of these issues or a multitude. Is it fixable? Everything that I just talked about, those three main common diagnoses are largely correctable. In very rare instances, they aren't correctable and they need, they warrant surgery. However, that's only in extreme cases. All right, nine times out of 10, it's fixable, even probably a higher, than, higher rate than that, okay? So if you're having any of this pain, it's correctable. Um, you just need to get the right program um, and do the right exercises and, um, and figure out what's causing it, okay? So all of it's fixable. That's one thing I want you guys to understand um, tonight is all of this is fixable. If you go see, if you've been to a physical therapist or a chiropractor or a physician, and you tell them that you want to get back to squats or deadlifts and they tell you, oh, well, just if it hurts to, to do that, just stop. You need to find a second opinion. You need to continue to search um, around and find somebody that understands your demands and what you want to get back to because there is a way. All right. Just need to find somebody that believes in you. All right. And it can uh, has a track record for helping um, people do that. OK, um, so don't don't take that for an answer. If you come across that, keep getting second opinions until you find somebody that can help you. OK. All right, so we're gonna get into some treatment, okay? Um, so we need to find and understand the cause, all right, of what's going on. Is it the work ergonomics? Is it the squat setup or how people are squatting? Is it the way they're deadlifting? Is it the way they're sleeping? Is it core weakness? Is it core, is it low back tightness? Is it glute weakness? Is it some, what is the underlying issue of why this is happening? So we can do all the treatment we want, but if we don't find the under, underlying cause, it's an uphill battle from there, okay? Again, assess, don't guess. Um, from there, we need, once we locate that, we need to decrease muscle tightness and figure out why are these muscles getting so tight. If we can get loosen up the muscles, we get pain relief. However, that's just training symptoms. We need to get to the root cause of it. We have three phases in PT with us. Phase one is decrease the pain, and that's usually deep by decreasing muscle tightness, all right? But a lot of times that's just gonna come back because the root issue hasn't been corrected. Phase two is to go through a uh, list of exercises that are tailored to you and improve strength. Okay, get to the root cause of this issue. Phase three is where we bulletproof the body. Make sure that, um, make sure that uh, the rest of the body is working the way it should. How's the ankle mobility? How's the hip mobility? Because that influences things as well, okay? Um, and then strengthening, um, further strengthening of the core and hips 
Um, and then also lifestyle modifications, weight loss, smoking, nutrition, and then also activity modification. Okay, do we need to modify things for uh, the time being? Okay, not saying stop. We just need to modify it for the time being, let the body recover, regenerate, um, and get a little bit of rest. Okay, usually just a week. Okay, if that, um, but we want to continue to work out. We're not somebody that's going to tell you to stop working out. One of the best things, one of the sorry, one of the worst things you can do for back pain is actually stop working out and stop moving. All right, one of the best things you can do is continue to work out in a way that's safe. Okay, and doesn't provoke the low back pain. And there's such a large variety of exercises um, and modifications that we can make. We can we can find ways for you to get to exercise without low back pain. Okay. Um, so I get a lot of questions about heat versus ice, which is better, what should I be using? So you should be using um, heat, okay? If you have a tight muscle, it's gonna help the muscle relax. If you just recently injured your low back and it was kind of an acute injury, you deadlifted wrong or you swatted, something just didn't feel right, you can throw ice on there, it helps decrease inflammation and decrease pain that way, okay? Uh, another thing is, uh, what does the evidence say based on back braces, okay? Like I said, we have a built-in back brace. We have that transverse abdominus. It's like a built-in corset. We don't need back braces, right? A lot of times when we wear back braces, what happens is it actually just makes the core even weaker because now this back brace is providing stability and that transverse abdominus and the other core muscles that are supposed to be providing that stability don't have to work so hard, okay? Um, however, if somebody has excruciating low back pain and the only way they can get a low, out of bed and walk is to wear a brace and go ahead and wear the brace, we need to also be doing subsequent strengthening as well, okay? And then lastly, seek out a medical professional if this doesn't seem to be getting better, all right? Um, I wanna address, before we kind of get into, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a self-assessment that you guys can determine on what your core strength is at, okay? Um, in just a second, but I wanna address Jeremy's uh, question about, um, about the butt wink and uh, for those that don't know what it is, and then also address what you can do about it and why it's happening. All right, so when we do, hopefully you guys can see me here, all right? So when we do a squat, we should be maintaining, and same thing with a deadlift, we should be maintaining this curvature of the low back, all right? So when I do a squat, I should maintain that curvature, okay? Sit back, sit back. However, when we get into a deep squat, if we have limited ankle range motion or hip range motion, there needs to be, there's a lot of times compensation that occurs at the low back to make up for that um, poor um, mobility, okay? So what happens is that butt wink, all right? So my, you guys, I want you guys to watch my core, or my, sorry, my low back. And you guys can see it's pretty good right now. Still good, still good. Now as I get deeper into a squat, do you guys see how my hips are kind of tucking underneath me? And my low, I lost that curvature to the low back, okay? I did that on purpose to replicate what it would look like, okay, if somebody's running out of hip range of motion, ankle range of motion. Okay, good, good, good. Then I tuck, and then they come back up. All right, I restore it, okay? Again, this is due to hip weakness and, uh, or sorry, not hip weakness, hip mobility issues or tightness, and sometimes ankle restrictions as well, okay? But we talked about earlier on if we, we talked about how disc herniations happen, right? Remember how, if we get that, um, if we get the opposite curvature, okay, and start rounding out the opposite way, it can irritate that, um, that disc and push it back and cause pain and push on that nerve. Same thing with a butt wink, all right? We have a normal curvature here. However, if we go into a butt wink, that hip is tucking underneath. Now we've got rounding at that low back and it can cause some disc irritation and pain, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, Jeremy. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but um, that's the gist of it, okay, and why it's happening. Again, we got to figure out why, what's, is it a, is it a motor coordination issue? It, sometimes it can be just that um, the muscles aren't firing the way they need to to provide that support for the, the hips. Sometimes it can be hip restrictions. It can be um, ankle restrictions. can be a couple of different reasons, all right? That's why it's important. Assess, don't guess, okay? Um, but, yeah, hopefully that makes sense, guys. If it doesn't, um, let me know. Um, but, yeah, that should if it makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over an exercise you can do to test your core strength. Okay, again, core strength is overly blamed for low back pain. Okay, um, is core strength sometimes the reason for back pain? Absolutely, but um, it's over, it's over diagnosed. Okay, in my opinion, a lot of times it's mobility restrictions. All right, so what you're gonna do 
This is an exercise to test the core strength. This is this would be an assessment that we do um, as physical therapists. If somebody comes in with low back pain, we're trying to figure out what the issue is. This is one of our go-tos. There's a couple other ways you can test core strength, um, but this is one way, one of the best ways. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your knees. You're gonna push your you're gonna put your hands behind your low back. You're gonna push your low back into your hands. Okay. So you guys feel you should feel your low back pushing those hands, pushing against the floor. All right, from there, you're gonna bring your legs straight up and then you're gonna slowly lower them down, okay? Maintaining that pressure, okay? Of your low back into your hands. If you start, if you start getting lower to the ground and you start feeling like decreased uh, pressure on your hands from your low back and you feel like your low back's arching, that's, that's telling me that the core isn't quite as strong as it needs to be to provide that stability. So when a patient comes in, what I do is I push my hand behind their low back have them do that movement and breathe out. Don't hold your breath, okay? And see how they do. If they're not able to do that and I start feeling that low back arch, that's indicative of core weakness, okay? And one way you can monitor your progress is making a mental note of what level your legs are at and when that, that curvature of that low back starts happening, okay? If you guys have pain with that, that's also a good indicator that there is some um, low back um, weakness that's contributing to the low back pain, okay? Because that's the big thing that we're testing there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Again, if nothing, if that doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, we're gonna move into some corrective exercises, okay? Um, one, to address core weakness, okay? How to strengthen up that transverse abdominis. Second is how to stretch that piriformis. And, um, and improve hip range motion by decreasing that tightness of that piriformis. We have hip improved hip range motion. We have improved hip range motion. We have less butt wink when we get down into a deeper squat, okay? Then we're also gonna go over an exercise that's gonna help loosen up the low back as well, okay? So, I want you guys to grab a mat and go ahead and lay on your back, like so. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our arms out to the side like this. Okay, this is helping anchor our, our, our shoulder blades down against the floor. And then from there, we're gonna bend our knees and we're just going to slightly, sorry, do small oscillations of, at the knees, okay, side to side. And then we wanna slowly work our way down to the floor. Okay, nice and slow and controlled. Don't be flying through these. Should feel a nice stretch kind of right through here, okay? This is a QL, that quadratus lumborum that we were talking about. That tends to get tight. If somebody wakes up with tightness in the morning, okay, or low back pain, this is one of our go-tos that I give to patients to help free up that low back. You can just do like 15 oscillations side to side, nice and slow and gentle, working your way down to the floor. You can kind of hang out there. And go to the other side. You can do a couple deep breaths. And again, ideally you do 15. I'm not going to do full 15 tonight. Okay. And you guys don't have to memorize this. Um, I'll be sending these exercises out after the workshop um, as long as you filled out that uh, registration or liability waiver. Okay. Again, none of these should be painful. All these should feel pretty darn good. Okay. Um, all right. If there's no questions on that, we'll move on to the, the exercise that's gonna help strengthen up the core or wake up that transverse abdominis, okay? And help provide stability for that low back, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands behind your low back. And then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna push your low back into the floor, okay? And hold for three seconds and then relax. Push that low back into your hands. You should feel the pressure on, from your, uh, on your hands from the low back. And again, we're going to hold for about three seconds and be breathing out simultaneously while we do this. Breathe out, relax and breathe in, breathe out, and relax. Okay, we're going to do about 15 reps there. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to kind of explain this. So you should be feeling this maybe a little bit in the front. You may also feel a little bit in the low back. Again, that transverse abdominis wraps all the way around from the front to the back. Okay. Again, this should not be painful. Our spine likes movement. 
This is another exercise that's great for anybody that wakes up with pain or discomfort. Okay, it helps free that up because we're our spine moves in flexion and extension, and then also rotation. Okay, and so we did rotation, freeing up rotation by doing this. Then we worked on flexion and extension with with this exercise. Okay, all right. This body likes movement. All right, if we stop moving, that's when we our spine starts having pain. All right, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do stretch out the piriformis, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross our left leg over our right leg, take our right knee and drive it to our, sorry, the left knee to our right shoulder, okay? We should feel a nice stretch time in the glute area here. I want you guys to make a mental note. What are you feeling? All right, monitor on how intense the stretch is because we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. If you notice that, um, like let's say right now I had um, pain on my right, on my right uh, low back or my right hip. Um, I would be monitoring what I'm feeling on this left side. Okay, and then also see, does it feel more intense or less intense on this side? A lot of times when people are having right-sided hip pain or low back pain, this exercise is more intense or the stretch is more intense on this right side. Now, ideally, you wanna be holding these stretches for about 30 seconds. Those other exercises, you can do three sets of 15. Um, just for time purposes, we're just going to do one today. Um, and then for these stretches, you want to be doing three sets of 30-second holds. But we'll just be doing one set today. All right? So what did you guys feel on that? Did you feel like one side was tighter than the other? Or did you feel imbalances? Okay. This can also help, again, free up um, uh, the hip tightness. Okay, and decrease that as well. Okay, so those are the go-tos to get started and can provide a lot of relief um, for anybody that's having low back pain. Okay, they're super simple, um, but the more I learn, the more the basics are important. Okay, just like there's no better, there's no better exercise than squats, deadlifts, push-ups, farmer carries, um, you know, stuff like that, Some stuff that's functional. Keep it basic, all right? Um, same thing with these exercises. They're basic, but they go a long, long ways with things, okay? And again, just reiterate, if, there's, if you're having pain with these, okay, um, you need to figure out why, okay? You should stop, first of all, stop the exercise and then figure out why, all right? If this makes it better, if these exercises help, that's great, okay? It means that we're on the right track. Um, and these, these exercises will take you to a certain point, okay? Some, for some of you that have minor low back pain, this can fix it all. Um, for those that have longer standing low back pain, it can help. It can it kind of, uh, it's like low hanging fruit. Okay, we, we get those and it's gonna make it like feel 25 or 50% better. Um, but it just means that you're, if you respond well to these, it just means, but you feel like it's not perfect. It just means that we're on the right track, but your body just needs a little bit more. Okay, if this makes it worse, okay, we need to figure out what the reason for that is. Okay, and figure out what's going on there. Okay, because um, it just means that there's, yeah, something more complex going on as well. Okay, all right. Um, so any questions on those exercises or anything at all, guys, on that before we wrap up here? Okay, I'm going to go over while questions come in. If there are any, I'm just going to go over prevention a little bit. Um, so you need to listen to your body. Do a proper warm-up and cool down. Okay, stretching after your workout. Hydration is important. Limiting sugar intake, um, engage in a variety of exercise. Don't get in a rut of just doing strength training or just to get in a rut of doing running. You want to be doing a mix okay, of things. Um, that's super important as well. Okay. All right, guys. So, again, like I said, I'll be sending you over these exercises um, to your guys' email um, so you guys can follow along those. And if you have questions, um, you can just respond back to that email. I think, that, I think my phone number, our phone number is in there. Um, you can give us a call too. I'm happy to walk you guys through it if you have questions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so like I said earlier in the workshop, you know, luckily there's a, a solution to all this. And it's a solution we've helped hundreds of people find. Um, for example, we had a patient um, that had been to his doctor um, and a handful of PTs and chiropractors that didn't really seem to help. They made it, they, they helped a little bit, but they didn't um, help the entirety of it. You're still having pain with squats and deadlifts. Um, everyone just kept telling him that he needed to strengthen his core and gave him exercises. Um, 
that again helped a little bit um but he got desperate so he started turning to youtube exercises and videos and kind of went down that rabbit hole um and did every exercise under the sun that claimed to be the best exercise for low back pain um he found us through a workshop just like this and ended up scheduling evaluation with us and turns out his core is perfectly fine um and that wasn't even really his back that was issue right uh the problem was in his hips and uh, in his ankles and then after we did a squat video analysis we found out his technique was off a little bit we actually found what jeremy was talking about um before was he had a little bit of the butt wink the butt wink was happening because of limitations in his ankles and his hips so we didn't even touch his low back we looked at worked on his hips and his ankles and within two sessions he was squatting pain-free um, he ended up working out working with us a couple more sessions um to clean up his form a little bit and he actually put on 50 pounds on his squat right just by cleaning up his biomechanics with it um and now he's exercising squatting pain-free and stronger than ever so i want you guys to you know envision you know what your life would look like if um you know or what it could be like if you don't have this low back pain okay we did an exercise in the beginning of the workshop um you know having you guys think about um what are you unable to do because of it how long has this been going on for i do that uh activity because a lot of people don't realize how long they've been actually been dealing with this pain and how long it's been impacting their life i ask patients all the time during their first visit you know what are you unable to do because you want to um a lot of times they're just like oh i just want to get out of pain i'm like well what do you want to get out of pain and they're like so i can play with my kids because i guess i i guess i'm really not able to play with my kids like i want to um i'm not able to work out like i want to which has resulted in some uh weight gain my stress is higher because i can't work out like i want to right so back pain is very debilitating and um it can impact people's ability to exercise and enjoy life and and uh you guys shouldn't have to be um restricted because of low back pain all right um so i want to give you guys an opportunity we've helped hundreds of people overcome low back pain and overcome this um this time and over this time of working with people just like you we've learned that there's a pattern to solving low back pain and our our time figuring out these patterns led us cre to creating our bulletproof low back and performance program all right uh, we go through a current and previous injury analysis low back posture and alignment evaluation put you through a full body biomechanical assessment of a squat and deadlift or whatever other exercise you're having pain with sometimes it's like leg lifts um, other core exercises we want to do a video analysis of that and figure out what's going on and then we come with a prescribed plan of care from there all right and i know what a lot of people are thinking um i just don't know if this will work for me i don't have the time or money right now i don't think physical therapy is what i need to solve my problems and i get that i hear it all the time um and i understand all right but i'm going to turn this back to you know how willing how long are you willing to live with this pain all right again this is not something you need to live with all right it's holding you back from certain things and enjoying life the way you should all right it doesn't have to be that way okay um and a lot of times this isn't just gonna a lot of times patients think that and people think that this will just magically go away and most of the times it's not okay uh, i wish it would all right um uh, make life a lot better okay because again i've dealt with the low back pain too and i know what you're going through um and i hear from all the time when patients are done um that i wish i wouldn't have waited so long to do this i missed on this so much looking back and never really truly realized how much pain was um impacting my life and and what it was doing to me so i'm probably wondering you know how much does this cost to to get um you know the current and previous injury analysis the low back posture and alignment analysis the full body biomechanical assessment uh the video analysis and then come up with a plan of care typically it's 225 um, for initial evaluation however um because you came to the workshop tonight um and if you schedule within the next 24 hours it's 50 percent off and you get all this for just 112 all right you have a concrete answer on what's going on why it's happening what you need to do about it okay and why, if and how and um if it's fixable okay and what you need to and come up with a game plan from there okay to how about how to go about achieving that right um but yeah if you guys have any questions i'll be dropping the link there where you guys can fill out the form if you want to take advantage of that again um we just do we're only going to be handing out two or three of these um we only hand out three a week i think there's already been we did a workshop early in the week and already had a patient um sign up for that so we only have two left um so make sure you don't wait on that and get signed up um uh, for that if, if you're having a little back pain all right um and if you again if you guys have questions um just let me know i'm happy to happy to answer any um as well okay um all right guys as long as there's no other questions that's all i got for you tonight 
All right, but I hope you guys enjoy the um, rest of your Wednesday night. And oh, Jeremy says, thanks, Ben, solid info. Absolutely, you are more than welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for, thank you guys for, for coming and I hope you guys found it beneficial and, and whatnot too. So, um, but I'm looking forward to meeting you all you guys in, in person and hopefully it's not um, before too long yet. Um, we can get back to safely, you know, working out and being in the gym. And I'm looking forward to meeting all you guys and, and helping you out with any issues that, that you're having uh, with regards to any pain points or mobility issues or anything like that. So um, again, just looking forward to that and uh, hope you guys stay safe and healthy until then. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday night. All right. Bye guys.